and we're going to hit the ground in a messy sprawl and just like start running from there like that's kind of what's happening here hey you guys it is alvine and bellatrix here <laughs> Hey you guys, I'm so excited to finally be filming another vlog for you. It's been a hot minute since I did one of these. I did a few last year and I found them really fun. And as a consumer, as a, a content consumer, I really enjoy vlogs. I think a lot of us are like this. I am a bit of a sticky beak. I like to see behind the scenes. I like to see snapshots of people's life. I like to see their home and what they're doing and that kind of thing. So I think that is one of the directions that we're gonna go with this whole YouTube thing. I've been thinking over the last few weeks like what I want to do, what the next video is, that kind of stuff. I'm going to be fully honest with you. I really struggle with filming YouTube videos. I always have, although I've very much fallen out of the habit of it and I find that I just get so caught up in my head before I'm doing it, while I'm trying to do it. Like there's been tons of times that I've filmed stuff that I've just never posted. Like I have hours and hours and hours of content, you know. I just, I lose my train of thought. So I go, Ugh, I'm not doing this anymore. Or I've just, you know, there's just a lot of things. But I feel like um, in terms of like the vlog content and stuff, you know, We've got AI coming in and all that kind of stuff now, right? And things are becoming more and more perfect. Like I really feel like it was Instagram that like began destroying the world <laughs> in terms of aesthetic and all that stuff and everything having to be perfect and whatever and all of us really getting into our heads in that way. I mean, I think we've always had a thing with that, but I think Instagram was a real, at least as far as I saw, that was like a, a crux point. With all of this perfection, I think more of us are genuinely craving authenticity at this time. Now, this has been a topic that's been around ever since I've been on YouTube, the the idea around authenticity. Are you being authentic? But what people truly want isn't authenticity. What they're really after is the fantasy packaged as authenticity. They want to believe that the fantasy is real, you know? <laughs> That's kind of as a collective where I feel like we're at at the moment. But I do feel as we continue on with AI and all that kind of stuff, there's going to be more and more desire for authenticity to just be like, I just want to see real people. I don't want to see computers pretending to be people. You know, I don't want the airbrushing. I don't want the filters. I don't want all the stuff. Like I just want realness to, I don't know, for whatever reason, whatever it is that we desire to be okay with also being human or whatever it is, you know. I feel like there's more of a shift in that direction, but there's still kind of that thing of we still need you to be like a pretty picture. Like we still need the fantasy, please. We're not a big fan of the real real. We want the real pretty or some, I don't know. Vlogs are something that I really want to do moving forward. So I thought we would just begin and start today. I'm sorry, I'm knocking my camera around. I actually have a new microphone as well. I didn't realize until I filmed my last video how bad the audio is on the phone. So I ordered a microphone. I'm not super happy with it. It sounds very like tinny to me still, but it's just like a cheap little one that I can plug into my phone. So anyway, hopefully it's better than it was before. We have some exciting things coming up this week. The main one that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys as well is Saint Expedite's feast day. So we're sitting here in front of my Saint Expedite altar section here. So Saint Expedite's feast day is on April 19th. And he is a saint that I've been working with for some time now, I don't know exactly how long, but each time I work with him because I have a like a daily devotional kind of relationship with him because I really believe in building up a relationship with whatever spirits or deities or whoever that you're working with. I have definitely experienced that and I would think it would be fairly obvious that the deeper the connection that you have with a being, the greater that they're going to like work for you, right? So anyway, I regularly chat with Saint Expedite and we have our little devotionals that we do, but every time I've worked with him for for a specific outcome, he comes through every time so quickly. So for those of you who don't know, Saint Expedite is the patron, patron saint, <laughs> I can never say it, the patron saint of quick results. Okay, and he works very, very powerfully. He's one of the most uh, popular saints in magical work. A lot of people are still unfamiliar with the fact that there are 
many witches and practitioners across various traditions that actually fold in various elements of Christianity or Catholicism. From my background, as far as I understand, they are different. But Christianity and Catholicism into their craft. And some people are like, oh my gosh, you're not a real witch. All that shows me is that person's completely ignorant because there's so many cultures throughout the world that have brought Christianity into their magical and folk ways of practicing. Anyway, so I'm working with St. Expedite, love St. Expedite, and I'm really looking forward to actually celebrating his feast day for the first time. This isn't something that I've sort of thought to do really, but um, one of my good friends, Justin the Witch of Enchantment, also works with St. Expedite, and he was reminding me the other day, he's like, oh, it's St. Expedite's feast day next week. I was like, oh, fuck yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I should do a nice thing for him. So I'm going to get him flowers. I'm going to cook him some more pound cake or bake him some more pound cake. Pound cake is his favorite. And it's kind of generally accepted that he loves Sarah Lee pound cake, but I cannot get that here. I cannot even have it sent down to me from the top of Australia where it is available. So they won't send it here to me. That's fine. So I have to make it myself. So I'm going to be going to the shop today to grab a few more ingredients. I just need some more eggs and more butter and stuff. And I'm going to make him a pound cake. I'm going to try and get him red roses. We'll see what's available at the moment. But red flowers. He loves red flowers. So I'll be getting him a big bouquet of some kind of red flower. He'll get a nice glass of wine as well as a candle and some pound cake. I also ran out of pound cake. So when I give him offerings after he has done whatever work it is that I have needed him to do, I have like just little frozen pieces of pound cake that I keep in the freezer. And so that way, anytime I do workings with him and I need the offering straight away, the thing with St. Expedite is that he gives quickly, but he also takes away quickly. So the idea is that you get him his offerings whatever it is that you've promised him for the work that he's done or doing for you, you give him whatever that is ASAP. Otherwise he may take it back, right? So that's why I like to keep pound cake in the fridge and I just whip out a slice every time, you know, I need to. I've run out. So we're going to be cooking a whole new pound cake, which will be very fun. What's up beauties? Okay, we are doing a little unboxing, if you will. Packet opening, parcel opening. <laughs> so I got one of these. Some of you will recognize what this is for. So I have a new deck, the Alistair Crowley Tarot. So this is a Thoth style deck. So there are a few different systems of tarot. The most popular being the Rider Waite, which is what most of you will be familiar with if you're familiar with tarot at all. So this is a bit of a different system, this one, but I wanted to trim this deck, which is what this handy dandy tool is for. So let me show you this. So the card stock on this deck is horrendous. All right. It's awful. It's like very thin cardboard, just like it's, it's really bad, but I love the deck. Like the artwork is to die for. I'm obsessed, but as you can see, the cards have two borders, two borders. Now I'm not one of these people that's like big on borders or big anti-border. You know, there's a lot of people like that, like, oh, we don't want our tarot cards with borders. I don't mind. As long as it's tasteful, as long as it doesn't take away from the artwork, I'm happy with that. So this one, I feel like this kind of golden um, little, I can't remember what it's called. One of my friends was telling me what it's called, but this little border I feel is fine, but with the extra white border on top of it, it's too much. So I'm going to be cutting that down. And then what you do with this tool is you just pop the edge of the card in there and then click, 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 click. And you have the perfect rounded tarot card edges. So that'll be awesome. But I'm still deciding how to actually cut the cards. So I don't have a good guillotine. I've got like a crappy guillotine, which I really think will tear the cardboard. Yeah, I'm just not 100% sure about that. But with scissors, let me see if I can show you right up, right up close. You can see that like the guideline is very difficult to follow. There, it's just like, so my friend, Brittany, the Sunshine State Witch, she was trimming one of her decks recently, just the other day, or she's in the process of doing it now. But the deck that she is trimming has a thick, it's got a white border and then a thick black line that she can follow nice and easy. So anyway, I'm still not sure how I'm gonna trim these, if I'm going to invest in a guillotine 
or if I'm just gonna sit in really bright light <laughs> and cut really, really slowly. I do have some really nice scissors that I just found the other day. I should share those with you guys too. I'm gonna be using those as a magical tool, but I thought, you know what? If I use them as well to like trim tarot decks, like I feel like that's still magical. You know, it's still in the realm of like the practice, the craft. So I don't know, I'm still not sure anyway, but I just want to show you that my corner trimmer came today and now I really have to make a decision about how to trim these cards. All right, so this is everything for the pound cake for St. Expedite. Here is the recipe that I use. I'll give you a quick look at that. And that is from this book, which I absolutely adore. But I completely forgot my oven doesn't work. I forgot that it broke the other day. So it turns on, but it doesn't heat up. St. Expedite will not be getting pound cake today. I just totally forgot. Anyway, so I'm gonna have to give him some extra things to make up for it. I didn't promise him pound cake, thank God. So we're gonna have to work on that. I'm so annoyed. But while we're here, I thought I would show you a few fun things, I guess. Um, this is from my sister's garden. So my sister and her husband just bought their first house recently. Very exciting. And it's a house that's been lived in for a very, very long time. So there's all kinds of whimsical wonderfulness in the garden and all sorts of things like that. So I'm getting a few fun pieces. So this is just a kettle, which I actually still haven't cleaned. You can't see anything, but it's very dirty in there. Anyway, so that's waiting to get cleaned. I've got some jars here waiting to be uh, soaked to get those labels off. Um, this is my kitchen. I mean, it's not clean right now, but I mean, it's, it's mostly clean. Anyway, I just wanted to share the St. Expedite devastation with you. No baking for today. Thought I'd quickly show you this too. So this is my phone case, right? It's very beaded, beaded, beaded and battered. <laughs> I do kind of need a new one, like it's coming apart, but it's fine for now. But I thought I would show you just what I've got in here. So this is a little working here. It's like this mini little playing card in there that I have dressed and worked. Um, and then I always keep this is a handy little tool for anyone who films on their phone. I always keep this like little microfiber cloth thing in my phone so that I can quickly wipe the lens when I need to and get just a much clearer result. It shocks me sometimes. Like I'm like, oh yeah, it's fine. And then I'll give it a little wipe and I'm like, whoa, it's so much clearer. <laughs> anyway, hot tip. Yeah. In the interest of realness, I wanna tell you that I'm really struggling with the whole YouTube thing. And you may have noticed that already as I haven't been around regularly for a long time. I have a real parts conflict about this. Like there is a huge part of me that wants to keep doing this and loves doing this and loves you guys and wants to share with you and all that kind of stuff. Um, but there's another part of me that is small and broken and consistently triggered by this <laughs> to have to kind of like amass the courage to like sit down and just fucking talk to the camera to share myself is what it really is to share myself is like one of the most terrifying things and partly that's just because I'm someone who I've just always been afraid I am a small broken little bird <laughs> and have been my whole life and stepping into witchcraft and kind of claiming my power back has been massive, right? And I've been on a hell of a journey over the last almost 10 years now, kind of going through that whole process, which really began before that with arts therapy and, and some other things that I was doing. But now we're here and now I've done a lot of personal work and I'm still in the same place where I feel like this small broken child and you know, I, I constantly think about you guys and I constantly think about stuff that I want to share with you or like different things that I'm doing. I'm like, I want to tell you about it, but I have let fear stop me for so long in so many different areas, but let's talk about this specifically. I've let it stop me. So today I'm really forcing myself to just sit down and fucking do it to tell you that I'm afraid to do this, even though right now I actually feel fine. So it's funny, isn't it? Like sort of speaking it maybe takes away its power or whatever, but I'm feeling afraid and I'm doing this anyway. I'm feeling lost and confused and unsure about what to share and what to do and all of that kind of stuff, but I'm just gonna do it. And we're gonna hit the ground in a messy sprawl and just like start running from there. Like that's kind of 
what's happening here, I think. I know that I just need to start because I get stuck in my head as well. I think this is something a lot of us can relate to is that perfectionism type thing. So I'm not going to do an, I'm not going to release anything until it's perfect, but I'm also not going to put in all of the work that it takes to be perfect, right? So therefore we end up doing nothing. Uh, that tends to be how I operate anyway. So I want to be imperfect and just show up and we'll kind of figure this out together. I think that's what's going to happen. It feels weird and very vulnerable to kind of tell you this stuff because I know a lot of people feel the same way and I almost feel like I should just shut up, suck it up and just do the things and not talk about this because it's a weird, it's just a weird thing to talk about. But it actually feels cleansing to me in a way, like it almost feels like the foundation or something to just like say it out loud. Hey, this is not something that feels comfortable for me, but we are going to push ahead and we're going to do it anyway. And I think that's the key, you know, like I keep wanting to have it figured out in my head first before I do and become, and that is not the way it goes. Anyway, I appreciate you listening and um, let's continue on with the vlog. <laughs> What's up people? It is the end of the day. I'm about to go pick up my son soon and his friends for the sleepover. But I'm just finishing off some work at the moment <laughs> and I wanted to share something with you guys. So I'm writing a ritual for Beltane, right? Um, and this is something that we do for work where there are people involved who have been in like the magical sphere for a while and there are people who are brand new, right? So we've got people from all walks of life, but everyone's an adult, okay? Everyone's paying their own way. So we're dealing with adults here and I'm writing this ritual and one of the steps included is to burn a bay leaf. Now I've included steps like this in many other spells in the past, but this time my boss was like, look, the fire stuff makes me a little nervous just because of the way that people are, you know? So maybe just reword it and like really focus on safety or just take out the burning of the bay leaf. And I was like, we're dealing here with adults, people of sound mind and sound body. If you're 45 years old and you can't burn a bay leaf without having a massive accident, I feel like it's nature telling you something, right? Okay, so we're here at St. Expedite's altar. The flowers have come. They're not the prettiest bunch, but they're the best that we could do today. So he has some red roses and these are his favorite flower in my experience. A nice big glass of red wine. He loves his red wine and I've given him here some fresh tomatoes. So these are actually from our vine, well not our vine, but our plant <laughs> just outside. And I've also given him a fajoa. So I don't know if I've told you guys, but fajoas are one of my most favorite fruits. They go into season around now. This is the very first one of the season. There um, are a bunch of these trees around in this area. I don't know if they have them in the Northern Hemisphere or not, but they are quite prolific down here in the Southern Hemisphere. I think they may be native to New Zealand, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, when my husband and I were walking the other day, we came across this fajoa and I was so excited because I'm like, yes, fajoa season. But I thought I would give this first one to St. Expedite. So he has that as well. I'm going to cook him up a meal too and he'll get that later on today. Probably when we cook our dinner, I think that'll be when I come in and give him a feast for him to have as well. But he's got these other bits and pieces here um, and his water here is what he gets every day anyway. So these are some of the offerings that I've given St. Expedite today. Unfortunately, no pound cake, but hopefully our oven will be fixed sometime soon. We haven't gone about trying to do that yet. <laughs> so whenever it does get done, he'll be getting some pound cake and then I'll put the rest of the cake that I cook into the freezer for future spells and things like that. I think I will end the vlog here for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and we will see you again next time. Much love and many blessings.